Hello and welcome to 50 Fabulous Knits. My name is Pia. I am a Danish knitter coming to you this week from Dubai. I am going to talk more about my time here in Dubai at the end of the episode. But right now, I can't wait to get started on the knitting. Because this channel is my happy place where I get to talk about all the knitting. I'm super happy that you have decided to join me here today and I really hope that you will enjoy this episode. So today I am wearing a plain white shirt. Temperatures down here are in the high 90s uh, and it's not that I don't love my knits. I definitely love my knits, but Maybe not today. I do, however, have a finished object to share with you. A finished object that I would have been wearing had circumstances been different. I finished my cardigan. Um, and it's a cardigan that is super difficult to show <laughs> because it has a, a strange construction. But at least you can see the floof and the beautiful, beautiful color of this thing. And I am also uh, going to insert a photo of me wearing it. I'm backed up against the wall here, so I can't really put it on. But yeah, this is how it looks. It has no name. I refer to it as the knit with no name, which always makes me think about having been through the desert on a horse. Yeah, at least one of you are going to have that song stuck in your head all day. You're welcome. It's a great song. Uh, so, but, but probably this is going to end up as the knit with no name. It is heavily inspired by the sun bed jacket that I made this summer. I'm just going to show that because I brought that as well. This one. Uh, and actually it's probably easier to see the details of the constructions in, in this one because of the color. So it is uh, a sleeve that then continues, the, the white part here, continues uh, into the top, back, and front, and then goes on to the other sleeve. And after that, you pick up stitches uh, around and knit the lower part of the body. My grandma used to make these as her bed jackets. She would knit them out of the fluffiest, softest angora, and she would uh, make them smaller. I, I, I made this much longer than hers. Basically, she would just knit the top part, and, and then she would have like a, a, an edge going all the way around, um, around the, the top part, but only maybe 10 centimeters or something. But I decided to make it longer, to make it more cardigan-like. Um, and from this one, I also learned uh, a bit about the construction of it. So, so this one is quite different. It has a better fit. It is easier to wear. And it is, I think it is both a very casual cardigan uh, because it has this long flowy back and open asymmetrical front but at the same time it's super elegant to wear over a dress uh, in, instead of a jacket if you if you should wish to do so the yarn this is all about the yarn this yarn is it has my name written all over it like it literally has its name, my name written all over it. It's called 50 Fabulous, uh, the colorway. And it is um, dyed by a Danish hand dyer, Henriede, uh, by Kilak. Uh, and it's just, it's just everything. I love this color. 
it is it is just gorgeous it is really my color uh, Henrietta just caught me perfectly there it is one strand of uh, a sock yarn her sock base held together with one strand of uh, silk mohair in, in a light gray colorway. And yeah, I am loving my knit with no name. Um, I am going to send it out in testing um, in the beginning of next week. So if you're interested in test knitting this, you can send me an email at Pia at 50fabulous.dk. Uh, I do have some of the testers already, but there are a few uh, spots available. I'm gonna, I want to say something about the sizing for this one because it's super difficult. Uh, I mean, how do you measure size on, a, on a, an open fronted cardigan that is so? So special <laughs> in the shape. What I am providing in the pattern is actually um, the circumference, the, or not the circumference actually, it is, it is the measurements for this part, for the body with, uh, yeah, the back without the sleeves. And as you can see, this is a bit oversized on me, but actually not that much. It's really pretty uh, if it's just if you knit a size that matches your measurement from from the outside of one shoulder to the other. But you can also, of course, size up uh, and get a looser fitting, more casual cardigan. So yeah, very happy about this. Um, the pattern is going to include instructions for this basic stockinette and um, for the lace version here, my, my spider lace pattern instructions for that are going to be included as well so that you can decide for yourself um, which version you're more into. Um, I, I'm on a cardigan kick. Two of my whips are cardigans, but cardigans are so comfy. This is actually uh, probably going to be called the cozy comfy cardigan. Uh, cardigans are difficult to show. Sweaters are so much easier, but maybe you can see this cardigan. It has a drop shoulder uh, and it is a little bit oversized. Um, it has a v-neck which you cannot see because the edges are curling in on themselves but it does have a, a v-neck not too deep. I don't like the v-necks to be too deep uh, and then it's gonna have a, a ribbing around the, the neck and the front here ribbing to match the, the ribbing down here and on the sleeves it has large sleeves, not so large that you cannot wear it under a coat, but definitely not fitted sleeves. And then it has a little detail that I really love. Anyone who has been with this channel for a while knows that I'm not great with colors. But look, color on the inside of the pockets. So there's a little bit of a color pop that will only show up uh, when you move around in this cardigan. I really love that. Uh, the top part of the pockets here are made in double knitting. So if you've never tried that before, this could be an interesting place to start. And other than that, it is a very classic cardigan. It really needs a good blocking. I have not done a good job on the stockinette on this one. It is knit 
back and forth. It's only the sleeves that are knit in the round. So the whole body is knit back and forth. And just look, I did a really bad job at this. In my defense, I knit much of it in the car going from Italy to Denmark and much of it on the plane going from Denmark to Dubai. So you can really tell that my gauge has been changing and sometimes my pearl rows are just too loose. But you know what, I'm sure that this yarn, it's gonna bloom, it's gonna fill out uh, and it's gonna even out as soon as I block this. I am not the least bit worried about it. It's gonna look so, so pretty. Um, this one is worked top down, as is my preference, because then you can try it on as you go and, and not have to have knitted from the bottom all the way up here just to see that, yeah, I should have put in a few more inches or taken out an inch. I really prefer top down constructions. So up here on the shoulder, you cast on uh, with a provisional cast on so that you can knit down from the shoulder on both sides in, in a completely seamless way. So uh, you knit one part of the front with the V shaping and then you cast on for the other shoulder and knit that front. Then you pick up the stitches from the provisional cast on you cast on a few more stitches for the neck and then you knit the back. And as soon as you're past the sleeves, you join so that you have one long piece to, to work. And yeah, rows are pretty long in a cardigan, but that's okay. It's a, it's a very calming knit. You don't have to think much about anything. I will say though that I have been ripping back a lot with this one because when you're in a car or on a plane it's super difficult to dry it on. So yeah, I, I knit many sleeves for this one but that doesn't matter. That just, I get to enjoy my yarn more than once. Yay! And now the sleeves are exactly as I wanted them. The yarn that I'm using for this one is the yarn that I picked up when I was in Milan in the very special yarn shop that is called La Na. They only carry their own brand and, and I've never seen this yarn before, but it is wonderful. It's like really squishy. And mm, yeah, it's just lovely. Uh, this yarn, I just picked it out. It was placed in paper bags on big shelves. Uh, and I just picked up two skeins. They were 300 gram skeins. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna have some leftovers, but not a, a lot. I will say that I think it's an Aran weight. I'm knitting it to a gauge of 16 stitches to 4 inches and I think that would probably be an Aran weight. It is a wool alpaca mix. Of course there were no labels, you just, you just pick the skeins out of these paper bags and I didn't think to write down the information. I thought somehow that that would magically appear on the skeins when I got home. But I'm, I've been to the website and I'm pretty sure that this is a Merino alpaca blend. And yeah, it's beautiful. I want to come back to visit that store. It was a great store for sure. It's so different. But yeah, I am enjoying this a lot. The contrasting color, um, for the inside of the pockets is this one. Now this is color. This is also by Henriette by Killerick. Uh, beautiful color. And, and it is dyed on her alpaca silk and cashmere base. So it's very, very soft and oh, it's just a beautiful.
beautiful yarn. It is called Sun Yellow, and I can see why. But it has this lovely cold undertone, uh, which just makes it more my color than if it had had warm golden undertones. So yeah, really enjoying this project. The other cardigan that I'm knitting is for my coming grandson. And it lives in this cute little project back from uh, Knitwear by Maki. This is my beach knitting. Um, so yeah, I love this bag for beach knitting. It's so summery and cute. And inside is the cardigan for little Lucas. So um, this cardigan is knit uh, from the pattern for the family sweater. And then I'm just omitting the Estonian braids because uh, I need a, a break from Estonian braids. Uh, and then I added some sticking stitches so that I can stick it after knitting and you will have a beautiful cardigan. The way I'm doing it when I'm adding sticking stitches is actually, can you see up here, there are these little thingies that are just flopping around. When I cast on for the ripping, I cast on more stitches than the pattern says. Um, of course, it's different how many, depends on the pattern. Here I, I added five stitches in, in each side. Then I knit the ribbing and after knitting the ribbing, I bind off the extra stitches. And I do that because once I make the bottom, bottom bands, I can then sew these, attach them to the top of the bottom band. I don't really like the aesthetics of a steep cardigan where uh, the steep goes all the way up so that the bottom band is, is like this with the ribbing. I do prefer a, a ribbed collar on top. It's not something you have to do, it's just I prefer it that way. So I have these little thingies sticking out. Then I added five sticking stitches and I just knit according to the pattern until I came down to the ripping in the bottom. I bound off the sticking stitches and knit the ripping uh, without sticks. Again, a stick is not necessarily, it can be really difficult to, to get the edges nice. So if the stick had been going all the way down, it, it could have been kind of difficult to, to make that edge disappear. So I just decided to, to put the edge up here. Um, that makes it so much easier. What I'm going to do once I knit the sleeves is I'm going to crochet down uh, in my sticking stitches. I am going to be very mindful when I choose where to crochet because you need to, uh, let me see if I can show this, you need to grab one leg of each stitch. So that would be here. You can see the stitches coming down. This is a stitch, this one. When you're knitting, it looks like little V's. And, and now we're looking at it upside down, so it looks like little teepees. But what you want is one leg of each stitch so that you bind those together with your crochet. And you just, you just crochet, single crochets all the way down. Um, and all the way up. I usually do that after I crochet my enforcement, then I pick up the bottom bands and I knit those. Just because when you pick up stitches, you kind of pull the yarn a little. So 
if you already caught it, you could end up having a problem uh, of, of threads coming loose. I don't see that happening in, in this one because for this I am using a non-superwash yarn held together with a silk mohair. And anyone who has ever tried to rip back anything with silk mohair will agree with me that, yeah, stitches are going to stay where I want them to stay. But yeah, I need to knit the sleeves and I need to do my crochet reinforcement, knit the bottom bands and then just cut. I love sticking. It's wonderful. I've been sticking stuff since I was, what, I think I have a 40 year anniversary of sticking, so I really like it. I will, yeah, I will often modify uh, a cardigan to be knit in the round, depending on the type of yarn. Like for the, for the cozy, comfy cardi here, the yarn is rather heavy. And the heavier the yarn, of course, also the heavier uh, the, the stick or, or the edge after the sticking. So when it's something like this, I will, I will often just bite the bullet and knit it back and forth. Pearl stitches are not that bad. I mean, I've done a lot of rolling lately with those two cardigans, but of course with this one, not so much. I have one more work in progress, um, and it's, it's so new, I don't even know if it makes any sense to show it. But it is living in my lovely project bag from the Urban Stitcher. I love their sheep. Um, I think she, I think this is a, a stable of hers. She always has these sheepy, lovely project bags. Uh, and what is living in here is, as anyone can tell, it's a ready uh, sweater from Anka Strick. And I'm just going to insert a photo just in case this doesn't give the full picture of what I'm doing. I really love that sweater. Um, I first saw it on the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast where Caitlin was wearing it. And it's so pretty. I really like the way the, the color lays up here on the shoulders. It's so flattering. So now I decided I'm going to make a ready. Uh, yeah, I cast on using some Drops Air, which is one of my favorite yarns. It's a blow yarn, and I love blow yarns. I've been talking about, about blow yarns before on this podcast. I really think that as long as you respect the yarn, knows what the yarn can and cannot do, then blow yarn is a wonderful choice. It's very light and airy. It is nowhere as warm as a, a woolly yarn would be. Uh, and it carries itself pretty well. One thing you need to, to know when knitting with it is that blow yarns have a tendency to pull up, to grow widthwise and thus shorten. Uh, especially on sleeves. It's very noticeable on sleeves. So what you probably want to do when knitting with a blow yarn is knit your sleeves a bit longer than, than you anticipate and then maybe go down one or two extra needle sizes for the ripping just to make sure that the ripping is nice and firm because of course a, a, cup, a cuff here, a ripped cuff that grows widthwise, it just doesn't look nice. So you want to go down uh, an extra or two needle sizes uh, and maybe also knit the cuff a bit longer than you want it to turn out. I mean, it's, it's like using a superwash merino, just opposite. 
the super wash merino will will tend to grow lengthwise and you have to accommodate for that when knitting blow yarns tend to grow widthwise so again you need to accommodate for that when knitting with them i don't think blocking your swatch would necessarily give you the correct idea of how this yarn behaves because it's not in my opinion so much with blocking that growing happens it is more with wear uh, so yeah <laughs> you just have to experiment but keep it in, in the back of your mind that it it will have a tendency to pull up but if you just if you know that it's lovely to knit in a blow yarn um, and it's absolutely lovely to wear. Uh, if I were to knit a sweater in, in this heavy wool, I probably wouldn't be able to wear it inside. If it's a cardigan, okay, or a vest, so that I get just a little bit of air, but a full sweater, I don't think that, that I'd be able to wear it inside. But with a blow yarn, it's much less warm uh, and it is super soft. Like if you are knitting for someone who is sensitive to wool, this is an obvious choice. It is so soft. Even my little granddaughter who really dislikes wool loves her Christmas sweater knit in, in this. One more thing you should think about if you knit with a blow yarn for the first time, is don't pull out your sharpest needles. Um, because the blow yarn is constructed, it's gonna be so difficult to see, but it is constructed as a little tube that yarn fiber or wool fibers are blown into. Um, and if you're, if your needle is too sharp, then actually you will keep knitting into the tube. So um, don't use your higher, higher sharps. Uh, find something a little more blunt, at least in the beginning when you're working with it. Yeah, but the ready, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I think it's going to be... Uh, staple in my wardrobe. I really, really like the fit. I like how the color lays on top of the shoulders, so to speak. I think it's so flattering. So yeah, that is something that I'm gonna enjoy working on. This week, I also have some dream knitting. Just before I left Denmark, I received a very generous gift of yarn. This is, I mean, <laughs> look at it. Just look at it. Isn't it pretty? Uh, if I could hold it so that, that you could really appreciate the colors. Yeah. There you go. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. This is uh, a silk yak base. Just look how you can, you can really see the silk content that makes the, the colors just glow and come alive. And this one, the golden one, wow. How pretty is that? This is from a Danish hand dyer called Bettina. Her yarn is Anita's World. And this silk yak base is, it's everything. It is so pretty, so luxurious. And I know exactly what I'm gonna make with this. Every year I have a very, very special project that I prepare so that on Christmas morning, when the house is quiet, I can just tiptoe down into the living room and cast on something really exciting, something that I have been longing to cast on. 
Last year, uh, I cast on a pinguano that I had been wanting to knit for ages, and every year it is something special. In Denmark, we celebrate Christmas on the 24th. That's the big thing. That's the day where the families are together. We gather for a very traditional meal in the evening. Uh, then we dance around the Christmas tree with all the little candles on. And every time I tell this to uh, my first responder friends in the US, they're like, you do what? No, you shouldn't do that. But actually we burn our houses down much less frequently than you would think. Anyway, on the 24th, that's the big celebration. So Christmas Day is typically a very quiet day where every family just stays in their home and the children get to play with the presents and the knitters get to play with their yarns and Usually there are some cheesy movies on the telly and you eat whatever leftovers you have from last night, yeah. And yeah, I have this tradition of having a very, very special Christmas Day cast on. Last year I did a knit along for that cast on and I'm going to do that again this year. Because some of you asked and when you ask, I'm more than happy to follow. It was really lovely last year to be able to see through December, uh, people would post photos in preparation for their Christmas day cast on. And then in the days following Christmas, everyone would post their projects. And it was absolutely lovely. I am gonna cast on something with this yarn. I know exactly what it's going to be, but I want to keep it a secret for now. That's crazy, but I just want to keep it a secret. But Bettina was really generous when she sent me the yarn. She also sent some for you. So now I'm going to show um, the prices for the current knit along the ACAL 2021, which is an accessory along where we all post photos on Instagram with our knitted or crocheted or sewn accessories. And the prices I will on November 9, because that's when Christmas starts in my life, I will draw two winners and each will receive a project bag from Knitwear by Maki. She makes beautiful project bags. This one has a leather handle. It's perfect for the walk and knit thing if you want to do that. But also I really like um, that they're so sturdy. When I use her bags, and I'm not going to do that to this one, but I actually fold over uh, the top so that it stands as a bucket. Um, I can show it on my own. I just want this one to be nice when you receive it. But what I would do is I do like this because then it's it, it really stands and you can just put it beside you on the couch or on the floor and your yarn will be in it and you don't have to change your yarns all over your living room or the airplane. Done that. Do not recommend. But yeah, one of these for each of the winners. A skein of Bettina's lovely silk yak base. Two different colors. Now, I, I only brought this one, but yes. And then there will be some patterns. There will be some patterns from Inga, from Knitting Traditions podcast. There will be some patterns from Anna, who has the Knitting in Mauritius podcast, and some patterns from Knitwear by Maki Malene. She also 
designs beautiful sock patterns and she just started translating them into English so everyone can enjoy her patterns. If you want to see more about the cow prizes, it will all be in the description box below. That's my show notes. I should probably have mentioned that at the top of the episode, but there you go. Show notes in the description box below with a link to my blog where I will post some photos of the prizes. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think that was it for the knitting content this week. Um, For life stuff, well, we've been in Dubai for a while now. The first week we spent down here, uh, we actually brought my three nieces, my brothers, three girls, and we had so much fun. We had such a good time that I couldn't even take out time to record, which is why I'm coming a week late. I hope that's okay. I mean, I just couldn't because we had so much fun. It was so nice to see Dubai through the eyes of someone who had never been before. And we did all the touristy things again, (laughs) which is, that was fun. We went to the zoo, into the historic district. We went to Dubai Mall, the world's last, uh, the world's largest mall with three teenagers. Mm-hmm. That took a day. Uh, we went to the JBR, the walk, the beach. Uh, we did all the fun stuff. We even went out to Motion Gate, which is a theme park. Had a lovely day there. Yeah, we uh, we did all the things and it was really a lot of fun. When they left, it was it was quiet, but Peter and I are really enjoying ourselves. He's working a lot. I am happily knitting away, as you do when it's nice and warm out and you're right next to the beach. At least I won't get sunburned, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we are going to stay here until November 10, at which point we will be going to Texas, yay, to see our oldest son and his lovely family. Uh, The little cardigan that I'm knitting is for the grandson that will be born in the beginning of December. That's the primary reason for our visit there. Uh, yeah, I also packed my suitcase with lots of stuff for my big boy over there, John John, who is two and a half years old. He's now big enough that we can talk uh, on FaceTime or Skype, whatever will work for us. He's big enough that he can come and show us his toys and we can play a little with him. But yeah, it will be absolutely wonderful to finally come over there and hold them tight and be around them for a long time. I am so looking forward to that. It's my plan to keep recording. Actually, originally I had a big plan for Christmas on this podcast. Oh, I would do so many things. I would make like small patterns for decorations that I would just uh, release for free every weekend leading up to Christmas and uh, I would podcast uh, at least twice a week to share all the, the good Christmas stuff and all the wonderful traditions. Yeah, and then she got pregnant. So I In order to not stress myself out, I have taken notes about all my ideas and I'm going to do everything next year. This year, I'm of course going to record. I cannot not record because I love this 50 Fabulous family. I love the friendship that has developed around this channel, but I don't see myself podcasting 
two or three times a week. So, yeah, I'll do my best to pop in as often as possible. I really hope that you will follow along for the ride. Thank you so much if you've been watching all the way to the end. That is super sweet of you. I'm so happy that you are here. As I said in the beginning, this is my happy place. This is where I get to just talk about the thing that really rocks my world, which is yarn and knitting. So thank you for hanging out with me. I really hope to see you again next time. Until then, take good care.